Good morning and welcome back to another weekly update at beautiful scenic Riverside. You're probably thinking, wow, it actually is beautiful and scenic today. But we're just right next to all the all the broken, broken boat dreams. I'm actually considering doing a little uh, little short video series on, on each boat and how did it get here? How did it get like this? What's What's the story behind each one of these little boats that have been just discarded and left to rot? Anyway, but I got too much else going on at the moment because this week has been full on. I've got injuries in my forearms to prove it. I've been painting like a madman. Let's check it out. Today was a long one. Tomorrow will be a little bit better. It'll be a lot better in about a half hour when my pizza shows up. I'm treating myself. Anyway, trying to get the any sort of paint in here behind the rudder. It's a real pain. It's a tiny little crack. And I've had oysters in there before. Oh yeah, full-blown oysters. Kind of hard to get rid of. <laughs> okay, if I didn't say it before, today is March 31st, a Thursday, the end of the month. Time is flying by and I'm still not in the water. It's getting a little painful, but progress, progress. All right, let's get right into it. So the biggest thing this week, and I needed, I needed professional help with it, and an absolute legend here at the boatyard, Paco, the main boat bottom painting man helped me out in my in my time of need so big thank you to Paco what a legend here's what he did very simply he laid the uh, water line tape for me and this sounds like a very simple thing like oh you just you know pull it pull it tight and get it straight no it, it takes expertise to do this and to do it correctly uh, otherwise you'd be able to see from a mile away that I have a wavy you know, wavy bootstripe. Effectively, you can see on this boat, as uh, as derelict as it is, it does have very nice, very straight line to it. Actually, I feel like I can see a little bit of a raise right there. But anyway, but this is sort of what I will be going for, and then you also have this uh, boot stripe. So we got the boot line, boot stripe. Uh, this tells us it's the bottom of the boat, this tells us it's the top of the boat, and you can sort of see from here how it makes a little bit more sense. But getting this line done right was crucially important. Now that I've had that down and I've been able to paint over it, I now have a perfectly and permanent straight line around the whole bottom of my boat. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Paco, big thank you, man. Uh, all right, so here's basically what I've been doing. Uh, I wake up, I mix paint, I paint paint, I wait for paint to dry, and then I do it again. That's my week. And it's actually been pretty darn miserable. I thought I would enjoy this part. I thought I'd be like, yay, painting, something new. But no, as it turns out, the way boat projects go, it's just you get sick of the one thing that you're doing to go to the next one, and you're all excited, and then you're like, wow, this next one's terrible. But it's just how it goes. Anyway, uh, so here's, what's, here's what you're actually looking at underneath this whole boat is five layers at the keel of epoxy primer, and then three layers on the hull of epoxy primer. You put a couple more layers on the keel because it's made out of steel and you really want to seal it so no water can get to your steel keel or else it might look like this. And that would be very bad. Three layers on the keel that are in sequence or series of white, gray, white. That way kind of you can see layers if you start to go through your bottom paint. And now what you can see over the bottom 
right now, which is actually the final color. I'm gonna add a couple more coats, but this is the final layer. But this is a Seahawk, I've got it right here. Incredibly expensive, $250 for this stuff. It's crazy, $250, but it's good stuff. Um, but it is an ablative paint. I thought I was going non-ablative this time, but it turns out I'm actually going ablative. I just, I didn't know. <laughs> so anyway, so I've got all that in there and uh, yeah, the boat bottom's finally coming back together. Very soon here, I can start in on the top side. I've already got the bow shield back on up there, so I'm gonna be painting around that. And it's going pretty good, so we're making progress. Let's keep it going. So day by day this past week, I started removing the tape because the tape, as it turns out, is actually frustrating to remove up here. It wants to stick to everything. But slowly but surely, I ended up removing all of it. And I gotta say, it looks pretty darn good. All right, so last bit of big news that I'm pretty excited for is Insta360, the 360 degree camera brand, has sponsored me to do a review for them, which I am extremely grateful for and very excited. I've been mean to get a 360 degree camera for a little while now, and the camera I keep seeing that keeps pocket popping up on Instagram is definitely the Insta360. I see a lot of people getting some really cool shots from snowboarding, kiteboarding, wing foiling, uh, you name it pretty much, and I think they've become very well known for a camera that's easy to use as well as getting that really cool invisible selfie stick shot. Somehow the camera angles go around the stick all the way back to your hand, so it, you don't even notice, like you think it's a drone or something in the shot. It's really interesting, but I'm really excited. I'm just gonna open up what's inside the package right now for you guys to see real quick, because I haven't really gotten a look either. I, I was okay. I peeked a little, I peeked a little, but still. All right, we got some lenses. We've got a something. Maybe a selfie stick, I think. We have the bigger selfie stick. I like, you guys know I like big selfie sticks. I cannot lie. There we go, there's the big daddy itself. The Insta360 ONE X2 Pocket 360 Steadicam. And they even added a little SD card for me. Thank you guys very, very much for that. Uh, that is fantastic. And then last but not least, motorcycle mount bundle kit. Very cool. So it's got three different mounts in here. So we're gonna, this came all the way from China in like five days. I don't know how they did that, but they did it. Pretty cool stuff. So, all right. So this is what I have that I've got to go through. I don't know if I really have time today because I have so much boat painting that I have to do and everything else, but I'm kind of frothing at the bit here to just start opening everything up. But I know once I do, it will uh, consume my day. So maybe I'll do this while my videos are rendering. We'll see. But either way, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you guys so much for checking out what I'm doing and coming along with me on this very stationary journey. <laughs> and I'd like to say a very big shout out and thank you to my patrons. My patrons get exclusive early access, in-depth, all sorts of things from me. It's a great way to just support me directly and get a little bit closer to what I'm doing, a, more of a real feel of what's going on. So a big thank you to them. They are Dustin Holland, Amy Angleton, Mom and Dad, easy name to remember, Ken and Christine Birkenshire, David Page, Renee Chai, Todd Howman, Jeff Vandermeed, Rolling with the Tide, and Alexander Taylor. Thank you guys so much. You guys make these videos possible of what I'm doing. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the videos. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week.